Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you a preview of the second Panzergrenadier division, a new division available in the upcoming Murat update. Please remember that this is early access and was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. I'll go through all of the units and then we're going to go ahead and put together a quick deck. So let's jump on in. So first of all here in the logistics tab we have the Unimog. There's the M113A1 munition truck and the Mancat 6x6 munition truck. Nothing we haven't seen before. And then there's the Sultan, which is one of the new vehicles that's been added. This is a command vehicle. In this case, there is the Iltis Führungs and the Fuchs Fufu. And then we have the M577GA2 and the CH53G munitions helicopter, which is pretty awesome. Very big indeed. Comes with 2,000 supply and 12 health. So a pretty chunky boy. The Sultan's, you know, reasonably good. It's got the two front, two side armor. So a little bit more tanky than the Fuchs. And pretty much on the same level as the M577. The benefit of the Sultan is that it is a little bit faster off road. So. That would be why you'd take it over the M577. And therefore it is a relatively decent little command vehicle, honestly. Moving into the infantry tab, you have the Feldjäger with the four MP5s. These are similar to before. Decent accuracy at close range, so could do a decent amount of damage, but haven't really had much chance to try them out. You'd probably have to stack them up quite a lot in order to get them to win against other squads. Then there's the Citerungs. These guys have the G3A4, which is quite strong at the moment due to the high damage on the gun, but it's likely to be nerfed. So do take that with a pinch of salt. But 11-man squad, I've seen them already. But here's one of the new squads that's been added. Uh, the M40A1 Recoilless Launcher, which has 17 penetration at 1,415 meter range, 39% accuracy. It's all right. Um, honestly, these things are actually pretty good when there's limited enemy recon because of the exceptional stealth. If the enemy does have recon, these will be spotted and taken out in a couple of shots by a tank. The strength is 0.5, but this is just a number, like, I would kind of ignore it. Honestly, they are a little bit more tanky than it makes them look to be. So, yeah, either way, M40A1 recoilless team. And you can get eight of these on a card. Then we have the standard Pioneer line. We've got the Pioneer Führer, the Pioneer, the Pioneer with the Hand Flampatron, which is actually pretty good because it fires instantly as opposed to like the flamethrower on the east german side of things that has a little bit of a aim time and then we have the pioneer with the armbrust uh, at launcher which has uh, 13 penetration at 705 meter range the range on this is unfortunate it's not that great you know 20 round per minute rate of fire is okay though they're all right in terms of transports you can get the fuchs and you can get the Fuchs Milan with the Pioneer squads. So all of these can come in with Fuchs Milans, which do have the Milan 8 gem, which has the 19 penetration at 2,473 meter range, 50% accuracy. It's a decent 8 gem, honestly. The issue that you have with the Fuchs Milan, however, is that the bad stealth means it's going to get revealed when it fires. Then we have the Panzergren line, the Panzergren Führer which does have both the Red Eye and the Panzerfaust. There's the Panzergren with the Carl Gustav, which is a little bit of a better AT weapon at the 885 meter range with the 16 penetration. And you've got your standard six man, or sorry, nine man Panzergrens that come in with the M113. And then the Panzergrens that come in with all of the variants of Marders. So the Panzergrens with the Carl Gustav can come in with the M1A2, or Marder 1A2, sorry, and the Marder 1A3. Whilst the Panzergren Marder can come in with the Milan variants of the Marders as well. So that's something to bear in mind. Both of the Marder 1A2 and the Marder 1A3s come with 
standard Milans, not Milan 2s, as their launchers. So that gives them a little bit more of a benefit at longer range. And honestly, you don't really pay much more for the HGM capability. So I definitely recommend taking them when you can with those Milan launchers on them. Then we have the Milan squads, like the little HGM teams. So we've got the Milan 1 and there is the Milan 2. So the Milan 1, this is the 19 penetration, same system that is on the Fuchs Milan and the Marder 182 and 183 Milan. So same Milan and again, benefits from the exceptional stealth. So hard to spot at range unless the enemy has recon. If these fire, they won't be spotted by anything that has like sort of mediocre optics or normal optics and, and worse. So yeah, you can get away with firing these at pretty close range. And uh, then there's the Milan 2. The Milan 2 is really nice. And these Milan 2 squads, uh, these ones in particular in the middle here, they can come in with the Marder 182 Milan and the Marder 183 Milan and the Fuchs Milan. So you can double up on your Milans when you bring these in. <laughs> Saying Milan a lot right now. Uh, then there's the Fauschimjäger Milan, uh, which can be forward deployed. So that's something that you can use to catch out your enemy, which is pretty cool. You can put them in the recon zone, basically, either in the Iltis or the Huey. Then there's the Fauschimjägers. These are some new infantry that have been added. You've got the Fauschimjäger Führer, uh, which comes with six G3A4s. And then you've got the Fauschimjäger, which has pretty much a similar loadout to the Panzergrenz, I believe. So the yeah, these Panzergrenz here, pretty much the same, except from the difference in the anti-tank launcher. You get one less men than a standard Panzergrenz squad. So you have one less G3, which means a little bit less damage HE-wise. But this Panzerfaust 3 launcher is very good. You got the 29 round per minute rate of fire with 21 penetration. So very, very nice indeed. So if you need to deal with armored vehicles at close range, these should be your choice. One thing to consider, however, is that you are forced to bring them in at the maximum veterancy, and therefore you only get four available on each card, which definitely makes you use up quite a few cards in order to bring them in. Then we have the Jaeger line, which has the leader, which has a Carl Gustav, and the uh, standard Jaeger squads that we've seen before. There you go, that's your infantry tab. Moving on to the artillery tab, we have the Panzer Morsa. Morsas or mortars have been pretty popular lately. I've seen people kind of spamming them, but I'm not entirely sure how effective that is. They can definitely beat up infantry if they land some direct hits. And if you have enough mortars to kind of spam a target, then you, you might get value over time. Um, artillery at the moment is all about having a critical mass of forces in order to you know, obliterate your target in a couple of salvos rather than you know firing over time so in this case you can get like only four morses or panzer morses here so it's not ideal but you can however get six cards of these m109 a3s and you can have three on a card so that's a lot of artillery if you want to bring it in. It's going to cost you a lot to bring in. But it, there is a good opportunity there to really, really stack up on the tube artillery, which is strong at the moment. And then there's the uh, M110A2G as well, the M110 howitzer. This thing is a beast and can do a lot of damage. It just suffers from rate of fire. So, yeah, it's not that good in comparison you get way less of them so i mean i guess you could do something like this and it might do a lot of damage over time but you're probably better off relying on the m109s uh, then there is the lars 2 which is the cluster rocket nine penetration does do a reasonable amount of damage if it hits the mark but your issue will be dispersion so these currently really don't fire that fast and therefore 
and, and they also you know spread out their rockets quite a lot so in order to kill an armored target reliably you know, it's, it's it's kind of unlikely so these aren't the best choice at the moment although you do have two cards and you get four on each card if you want them and uh, then there's the mars which is the he launcher and this thing does hurt when it hits the mark but again you're suffering with issues of dispersion whereas with the tube launchers at the moment they can be a little bit more predictable than the rockets uh, which makes them favorable also the mars costs 400 points which is a lot for how effective it is let's move on to the tank tab so in the tank tab there is one new unit here but we've got the m48a2 cga1 which is your cheap m48 pattern tank with the dual machine guns in the 50 cal and the m240 so a good close range support tank for infantry then we have the leopard 1a1a1 which is again a nice cheap support tank less for supporting infantry and more for killing APCs and other lighter armored targets. So it can take out T-55s, for example, pretty well. Nice thing about the Leopard 1A1A1 is it has decent accuracy and enough penetration to get through those light armored targets. The M48A2 suffers a little bit on penetration, also has less range. So range is also important to consider here. Then there's the Striker. The Striker is new. So we got the swing fire missiles. They have 23 penetration, which is actually pretty good. But the accuracy at 45% leaves a lot to be desired. So not the most reliable launcher, but it does have mediocre stealth. So you do need recon at range to spot it. It does help against like the heavier tanks, like if your opponent's not using recon. But as soon as your opponent is using recon, these things are going to get killed pretty fast at range by those bigger tanks that it's targeting. Then there's the Leopard 1A5 Führer and the standard Leopard 1A5. They share the same stats. Uh, the Leopard 1A5 here coming in at base 2 VAT, which is why it's got extra accuracy here. But the Leopard 1A5, really solid tank. Shares the same AP as the Leopard 1A1. But gets a little bit better accuracy there. Well, I say a little bit, a lot better accuracy on its main gun. So, yeah, a bit more reliable when it comes to engaging enemy armored targets. And we have the Leopard 2A3, so the Leopard 2A Führer and the Leopard 2A3. You can get six of these at one vet on a card. You get two cards in this division currently. That's a lot of main battle tanks for a Panzer Grenadier division. So, yeah, you're definitely going to want to be making good use of those. Let's move on to the recon tab. So, I actually failed to mention this before, but in the tank tab, the striker is a Belgian unit. So the Belgians are included in the second Panzer Grenadier division, and you can see that here again with the Scorpion and the Scimitar. So the Scorpion and Scimitar share the same armor, the same speed and so on. You can see they get the mediocre stealth and they've got the good optics because they're recon. Now one has good and uh, one has I guess a bit better or at least it should be because of the symbols different but the difference here is of course the weapon mainly. Uh, one has a 10 penetration main gun which is just you know okay. <laughs> it's nothing special. Um, at 1767 meter range it's kind of awful honestly um, but for 40 points maybe it's okay at close range for supporting infantry uh, 40 percent accuracy accuracy there the scimitar with the raden is maybe a little bit better as infantry support against enemy infantry and the scorpion would be better against like enemy apcs and Maybe light armor. I don't know if it'd take out a T-55 very well t with 10 penetration. You've got to bear in mind that every, every sort of like 100 meters or so you get closer, you're going to get an extra penetration uh, point. So you'll be doing a little bit more damage. Anyway, let's move on to the Fashimieg Um Nice recon squad. A four-man squad. 
so not going to be too great against taking on other infantry because it kind of lacks the numbers but it does have the Panzerfaust 3 so if you get these into a sneaky position on a road they're going to be absolutely demolishing enemy armor uh, which is really nice they can come in with the bo 105 and the iltis and there's the eclairs eclairs i'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that unfortunately but belgian recon infantry they come equipped with the uzi which i believe was buffed lately to be better at cqc combat uh, again not too bad and uh, the unfortunate side of these is that they're forced to come in with the spartan and also Spartan's sort of like a relatively good armoured vehicle. That's not really what you want with your infantry. You want something like the Iltis, which is super fast on the road, 108 km per hour speed, or a helicopter that can get them into a really nice position early on uh, so that they can ambush. And in this case, like the M72 would be relatively good for taking on uh, units that it ambushes, but... You've got lower penetration, way lower penetration than the Faustian Jäger Aufklader, and you've got way less ammo, so like four instead of six. So the Faustian Jäger Aufklader are just outclassing them in every single way. Then we have the Lux A1. The Lux currently is kind of lackluster for what it is. Like, I really want this auto cannon to be more powerful, and then when it is, maybe it would be a decent sort of fighting vehicle like fighting recon vehicle uh, it does have decent speed so can get up to the front line pretty fast and therefore can contest maybe infantry recon squads but you're going to be struggling to do damage with this thing at the moment and that's kind of just unfortunate and it's not really good enough to bring in on its own with the uh, optics but of course that could change in the future then we have the uh, Fuchs Rasset this thing is well worth it you get exceptional optics for 50 points and it's nice and fast can get into position and stay hidden with the mediocre stealth so yeah great recon unit with the radar on top of there very cool then we have the Alfkaller and the Jaeger Alfkaller that we've seen before uh, the standard Alfkaller is not too bad uh, it comes with the Panzerfaust but the Jaeger Alfkaller just so much better you can actually bring in the standard Alfkaller with the Fuchs but you're probably just going to use the Eltis in most cases and with the Jaeger Alfkaller you have to use the Unimog. These things are very good. The Jaeger Alpha is a very, very strong squad at the moment, so definitely worth bringing. And then there's the BO-105 Recon Helicopter if you want it. Kind of slow, but um, yeah, kind of throw away Air Recon. Then the AA tab. So the AA tab is probably the, one of the bigger weaknesses for the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division. It only has access to two units, and it, that is the Fliegerfaust, which is which use the Red Eye which only has 4 HE damage and 35% accuracy, which is really trash tier. Or you get the Gepard 1A1, which is probably one of the best like cannon air defense in the game right now. So yeah, very, very good. And they got buffed with this Milat update to have extra range. So yeah, very, very strong unit. They are, however, weak to seed because they use radar to guide their weapons. So Seed can take them out, unless you turn off the guns in order to avoid it. Then we have the Heli tab. The Heli tab is pretty simple. You've got the BO-105 part one and the one, and the B-105 part 1A1. One has the hot one, one has the hot two. Um, the hot one has 22 penetration and a bit of slower rate of fire and accuracy. And then the part two is just like better overall with the extra penetration, the extra range. Uh, actually, the same range. Um, sorry, better accuracy and then a bit extra rate of fire. But the thing is with the rate of fire, you can see this like salvo length. So I guess it's like time to target really. And basically, it's not going to fire another HGM until the other one's either like lost target or has hit the target so it doesn't really matter a rate of fire so much but penetration is a big one here and 24 penetration is pretty decent so this would be maybe worth taking one card off if they can get on target nicely they can probably do some decent damage then we have the air tab now the air tab is pretty exciting because there's a bunch of new stuff here and uh, we've got the g91s these come with 30 mil cannons and then whatever armament so the 119 kilogram bombs in this case 119 kilogram bombs 
if they hit the mark, can do damage. But they don't really have much splash damage. So, yeah, they're kind of a little bit lackluster in that regard at the moment. But for a 40-point bomber, can't really complain. And then there's the rocket variant, which comes with the 67 uh, millimeter or 76, sorry, 68 millimeter rockets. Um, this thing, I guess, is okay as ground fire support, but yeah, I don't know if it's really worth an entire card to bring in because you only get three on a card now. These have been reduced in availability, uh, and I think will possibly be reduced more in availability in future. Maybe I'm not entirely sure. Uh, because they were relatively effective before, at least like the Alpha Jets I'm, I'm comparing these two, is what, is what I'm thinking of right now. Um, then there's the F-104. This is a anti-tank plane. It comes with two of the AS-30 air-to-ground missiles, which have 30 penetration. They only have 35% accuracy, though. But the nice thing about this thing is it's very fast. 1,386 kilometers per hour speed. Um, the fastest jets in the game have been slowed down a bit, so that includes the F-104 in this case. And, But yeah, they're still fast enough to get in, get their missiles off, and get out again. So that's nice. Uh, the only thing I am a little bit concerned with this aircraft is if it can fire both of their missiles before it has to turn away from its target. I haven't really had enough time to like fully test it out. I'm pretty sure it probably doesn't. Uh, then we have the Harrier. The Harrier looks gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, all of these new planes. I think all of the planes in this game just look so gorgeous. Like the the uh, the models of the aircraft are so cool. In this case, though, Harrier GL three, and of course, I am loving it as a Brit. But it's kind of slow. Five hundred and fifty six kilometers per hour, guys. Yeah, and it also only has twenty percent ECM. Like, I tried this against helicopters, and it was kind of bad. Because the AIM-9, it would fire, like, one AIM-9 and strafe a little bit, and then pass the target. You'd expect the speed, the slower speed, to maybe help it against, like, helicopters. But, yeah, not really. Against other aircraft, it just suffers because it's too slow. For the most part. So, yeah. I think this is just overpriced. Like if they want to keep it the stats it is currently, it's really overpriced for what it does. Um, then we have the napalm variant of the G91 with the 500 kilogram napalm bombs. Napalm bombs are pretty good at the moment, so maybe worth taking, but it is pretty expensive. Um, then we have the Tornado IDS with the four, or sorry, three 450 kilogram bombs. This thing has 30% ECM, 1,238 kilometer per hour speed. So actually a pretty decent in and out bomber. It can get in you know, and get out pretty fast and drop its payload without really probably taking too much damage because of the ECM. Uh, however, you know, with a, a big mass of AA, particularly cannon AA, people are using a lot of shilkers and gepards and stuff lately. Those will shoot this down. Like, well, more like shilkers and burusas. And those will be scary for the tornado for sure. Then you got the MW1s. Uh, again, these are the sort of anti-infantry cluster or anti-light target cluster. They pretty much do no damage against armor. So that's something to bear in mind. And then you got the Tornado IDS, which does do damage against armor with its uh, five Rockeye cluster bombs. Same stats uh, in terms of the overall plane. And then here's the Tornado IDS with the four... Maverick air-to-ground missiles, which has 26 penetration with 40% accuracy. So the penetration there on the Maverick missile, you can see it's lower than the AS-30. The AS-30 suffers with the accuracy. I think I'd still, in most cases, take these F-104s, though, because they're quite cheap. But yeah, the Tornado IDS, nice aircraft. Then we have the F-4F, which also has 30% ECM. And this is a, a nice fast bomber as well with five 450 kilogram bombs. So you know, a little bit better payload than the Tornado, but you do have to pay that extra cost. Then there's the Tornado F3, which is decent air to air. 30% ECM has four of these Sky Flash 
air-to-air -air missiles, which have the 7,067 meter range. So, yeah, pretty nice that it has those extra long-range missiles. A lot of them only have, like, two of these, like, air-to-air -air units, and having four is actually really nice because it just allows you to engage so much sooner. You bring in a couple of these at a time, you're going to shoot stuff down, probably. And there is the Tornado GL-1, which comes with the Alarm anti-radar missile. So this is your seed. So 20 penetration, 65% accuracy, not too bad, but very, very, very expensive. 385 points. All right, so that's pretty much all of the units there. So what we're going to do now is put together a deck. Let me just uh, go back to the start here and we'll sort that out. So in the logistics tab, I'm probably just going to throw in one of these because they're new and we'll bring in a card of the uh, ground supply as well. Though it might be better if I bring in those because it gives me more of an option as to where I want to put them. Uh, then we're also going to bring in the Sultan as an extra command. In the infantry, I am going to bring in some of these Fashimjäger. They're just nice to have to take out enemy vehicles. And then we'll definitely be bringing in the Hand Flampathron Pioneer unit because these guys are great at close range. So these can come in with the Fuchs. Actually, I might as well bring them in with the Fuchs Milan because it's just useful to have those extra A to GMs and it doesn't really cost that much more. At close range, A to GMs actually do pretty well at the moment. So there's that as well. But other than that, I am going to, of course, bring in some of these Milan squads. We'll bring in the Fashimega Milan since we can forward deploy them. And then we will bring in uh, the Citadungs, just nice bulky infantry. I'm going to bring in some Panzergrens with the Marder 1A3 Milans. Tempted to upvet these guys a little bit, but we won't because we just want to, I think, max out on veterancy. I am going to bring in some standard Panzergrens in the M113s as well. Uh, actually, we'll just bring them in Unimog because it's probably better. And I think we'll leave that for the infantry tab for now. Could also get the M40A1 in there. I think this could be pretty good for just picking off units with side shots. But we'll see. Uh, in the artillery tab, I am actually going to go like this. I kind of want to try this out, but I think the M109s are probably better for the long run. Then the tank tab will go Leopard 2A3s, of course. I don't know if the Leopard 2A3 Führer is worth it. The other thing that I need to consider in the infantry tab, we might want to add a leader here. Actually, I definitely do need a leader, though. Let's just add one in for now, and we can work out the points later. So, best leader would probably be the Panzergenführer, because it has that red eye and the Panzerfaust. But the Fashmiga Fjordo is actually not too bad for 115 points, nice and cheap. Probably don't want it to directly engage stuff anyway. I'm going to bring in the Strikers so we can try them out. Bring them in a little bit extra vet there. Let's just do one card. And then I'm going to bring in the Leopard 1A1A1s because they're really good value as well. And a card of Leopard 1A5s. Recon tab, we'll definitely bring in the Fuchs Rasset with the exceptional optics. We'll bring in both the Scorpions and the Scimitars so we can try them out, as well as the Fauschmjäger Alphapella. Uh, and I'm definitely going to want some recon helicopters. Probably also want to bring in the Jäger Alphapella, now I think about it. Yeah, for sure. Here, we're going to want to bring in both cards of the Gepards, and then probably one card of the Fliegerfaust. Helicopters. Potentially the BO 105 Power 101, but I might not even bring any helicopters. So we'll bring in the Tornado 
uh, Seed variant and the Tornado S Air variant. And then I'm thinking I want two more cards, so I need to find three points. Which I think is probably going to be a unit of infantry. Let's take out one of the units of Alshamega. That will give us three points. That allow, enables us to bring in two more aircraft. So we'll bring in the F-104 GAT aircraft. And I think possibly the bombers, because then at least we can use them on both the... We can use them on both the tanks and infantry. I think that's where we're going to leave it. Yeah, I have already tried these out and currently they're not great. So that's why I'm not adding them in this case. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is the second Panzer Grenadier Division. Let me just type that in. Second Panzer Grenadier Division. And we will save that. And if I jump on out of this, we can have a look at the deck as a whole. There you go. So I think this division is pretty cool. You know, it focuses a lot on that infantry. You've got some new units in the Fashamiega. You've got the new Belgian troops joining as well, which is very nice. It does have a lot of armor as well. For being a Panzergren division, having two cards of these Leopard 2A3s to back you up, that's 12 Leopard 2A3s, is really, really nice. You are, of course, quite light on the AA, so maybe that would be an excuse to maybe bring in some more aircraft to kind of back up that kind of gap in the division get some more tornado f3s in but yeah overall pretty solid division and with german infantry currently being quite strong um yeah you can't really go wrong the new patch might actually kind of change the way that german infantry is I think they'll probably get nerfed in the future, so watch out for that. But that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this quick look at the second Panzer Grenadier Division. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.